Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the UK Met Office run have a look at the five day precipitation and temperature so we still have dry conditions for the next few days a few showers here and there potentially uh, some heavier showers in the east tomorrow temperatures around slightly below average in many places and maybe slightly above average in the peak areas in the west and the south so we'll have a look at that uh, in a minute and then of course we'll have a look at the longer range look at the gfs gm east and the ensembles as it continues to look like we're heading for quite a cold end of april and start of may once again severity of the cold and longevity is what we got to decipher but it does look like inevitable now we're going to be seeing northerly and northeasterly airflows which regardless of how cold the upper air temperatures are going to be it's going to feel chilly and colder than average especially the further northwards and eastwards you are so have a look at that in detail in the second half of the video just remember if you enjoy my videos make sure to like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in the description so if we do start uh, but have a look at the latest from the live radar. You can see at the moment it is pretty dry across the United Kingdom. Uh, a few showers have been in the far south and southwest, but they're veering offshore at the moment. You can see where the high pressure is at the moment over the top of the UK and to our north. And you can see where the cutoff lows are across Europe. Significant rain, thunderstorms breaking out across France and Switzerland, Germany through into parts of Eastern Europe as well. Very severe storms. Um, here and that's because of these cutter flows and that's why sort of a week or two ago when we were looking at this easterly wind sort of um, coming up which is what we have at the moment for the UK we were really worried about these cutoff lows how far northwards would they extend because of course if these were a few hundred miles further northwards we'd start to see the northern edge of these showers and storms affect the UK and tomorrow we're perhaps going to see a little bit of that with a little bit of low pressure in the far southeast a little bit of an upper trough potentially giving some enhanced showers not affecting anything significant nothing like we're seeing across europe at the moment but perhaps some more heavier showers which we haven't seen over the last few days but for generally for the uk it has been a decent day temperatures around average slightly above as i said further south and westward you are uh, further away from the North Sea, cool easterly breeze. And then, of course, if you're further eastwards towards that North Sea, it is pretty chilly, a max of 10, 12 degrees. But whatever we've seen, that sort of easterly wind sort of died down a little bit. The clouds have bro uh, broken. And uh, we get some sunshine through. It is pretty decent out there. Temperatures getting up towards 16, 17, 18 degrees. And it all does depend on cloud amounts um, and, of course, how strong that breeze is, how sheltered you are as well. As we'll see with the temperatures... Um, if we overlay them right now, as, as of 5pm, so they are decreasing, you can see it's these very similar positions, southern parts of Wales, southwest England, along the south coast, and up into the northwest again, around Liverpool area, very, very warm, and again, it's all because the easterly winds cooling down the eastern side of the country, further inland we get those easterly winds to decrease in strength, so less of that cool breeze, and of course, when the air goes up, uh, up over the higher ground in northern England, we do get the fern effect, and that that's why, again, we're seeing these real war temperatures around Liverpool, St. Helens, Formby, Southport. These areas really getting a bit of a microclimate warm spell here with temperatures in the high teens. You go uh, sort of 20, 30, 40 miles further eastwards and you start to get into these bluer colours. Of course, climbing elevation, but uh, of course that easterly wind strengthening as well. So these sort of microclimate conditions uh, always happen when we see these sort of easterly winds under higher pressure. Um, and of course it happens the reverse when we do see westerly winds where the eastern side are a bit warmer so uh, for these areas luckily the winds do look like they're going to be staying in from the east and the northeast so these areas in the south in the northwest and the west in general are looking pretty decent again you can see this contrast very well across scotland far west of scotland all of these yellow colors not amazingly warm but warmer than the east where we're seeing more blues especially along the coast pretty chilly along there um and you can see you probably if you spoke to someone from newcastle they'd be like it's cool cloudy murky um i think pretty chilly out there sort of late winter like conditions but then if you speak to someone in the northwest of england not too far away it's very warm spring sunshine and uh, feeling much better so we are getting these big temperature contrasts, and it's all because of this easterly wind and of course sunshine as well so we do now have a look at the uk met office run have a look at precipitation and temperature over the next few days you can see those showers in the far southwest fading away over the course of the afternoon and of course overnight tonight still cloudy further eastwards a few showers potentially coming in and by tomorrow afternoon um or 
by late morning into lunchtime, you see those big showery outbreaks. Now, it's going to be very difficult to pinpoint exactly where they pop up. You can see the UK Metals Run have it widely through England and Wales, even into parts of southern Scotland as well. Some heavier pulses, some torrential rain, potentially in some of these showers, and maybe some thundery activity as well. But they are quite small, low clients, and should move through on the easterly wind quite quickly. And by sort of the middle to late afternoon, they do fade away. Some areas lingering a little bit, but should fade away. There will still be plenty of sunshine between this, and it will still again feel chilly on the easterly breeze the further eastwards you are. Through Tuesday, once again, very similar conditions. Showers in the far east and across parts of Southern Ireland. It's a bit cloudier potentially on Tuesday, holding those temperatures down a little bit more. And again, as you see that through Wednesday, Again, cloud thickest in the far east and the southeast and across parts of northern Scotland, further west, parts of Wales, northwest England, southwest England, really quite decent again for sunshine. As I said, the sunshine makes all the difference. It's going to lift temperatures up by a good two or three degrees. And then th by Thursday, it doesn't look too bad again. Actually, it does look like cloud is most in the far south of Wales and southwest England. So over the next sort of three, four, five days, it does look like each area is going to have a decent day here with that, where temperatures get into the mid to maybe high teens. But of course, there are going to be days. It's only 12, 13 degrees, feeling much cooler. So if we do have a look at those max temperatures, just to uh, finish up, have a look at the UK Mets Office run. You can see this afternoon, once again, those bullseye positions in central southern England to the southwest, 18, 19 degrees, across northwest England, 16, 17, 18 degrees. But further east, with 7 or 8 degrees along the, far, uh, along the east coast, and widely 13 to 15 degrees elsewhere. You can see it does uh, extend those warmer temperatures a little bit further northwards and eastwards, but there is a very strong temperature contrast from the coast to 50 miles inland. So we do run on those temperatures a little bit longer, you can see. Chilly conditions uh, over the course of the evenings, of course, with an easterly breeze. It is chilly upper air temperatures, not amazingly cold. And, of course, under high pressure, it allows clearer skies. Uh, so temperatures will fall away, maybe a frost in rural areas. And by Monday, you can see, again, those temperatures are down a little bit more with those showers coming in. As I said, maybe only 14, 15 degrees. Best temperatures across the so southwest of Ireland. So, again, looking chilly in a few regions, only 8 to 9 degrees, but widely more likely 13 to 15 degrees. If we do move to early hours of Tuesday, again chilly, maybe only 1 or 2 degrees in rural areas, maybe even colder than that. And by the afternoon, once again, getting up towards 13, 14, 15 degrees, thicker cloud, as I said again. And by Wednesday, we're seeing again, maybe 14, 15 degrees. Again, it could be locally warmer than that, but still widely more chilly. And, and it's because we have to, we, we, do, we do start to see a little bit of a colder air mass come in. So although some areas will see sunshine, it will be maybe a degree or two, or maybe three degrees cooler than we're seeing, for example, today in the far southwest because of colder upper air conditions. By Thursday, you can see quite a widespread frost across parts of Ireland, Northern Ireland, Northwest England, and a general northern and southern, northern England and southern Scotland. And by Thursday, it's going to be a pretty chilly day for some, only 10 to 12 degrees, but where we see that bullseye conditions in the south again, 16, 17 degrees, so not too bad. Indeed. And by Friday, again, could be an isolated frost. And again, as I said, it's all because of the upper air conditions are cooling down. You can see at the moment, we do have sort of 3, 4, 5 degrees at 850 HP in the far south, but we do run to next week, we start to see more sort of minus 2 to minus 5 degrees at 850 HPA coming in from the east. And although we will see equally nice sunshine at times, it will cool those temperatures down where we do see those upper air temperatures. And again, if we have a look at the wind gusts, you can see at the moment, 20 to 40 miles per hour, um, quite widely, uh, and again, cooling those temperatures down. But by the end of the week, it should um, sort of go away a little bit, those upper air Oh, sorry, those surface uh, gusts, uh, as we do, start to see more high pressure involved. But again, as I said, more of a northeasterly flow, so cooler upper air temperatures. So you start to have a look at the mid to long range. You can see easterly wind at the moment, those cutoff lows towards Europe, fueling those storms. Again, because we have a look at those upper air temperatures, it's warmer across Europe, warmer air feeding into those lows. That's why we're seeing heavier showers and thunderstorms, whereas for the UK, cooler northeasterly or easterly flow. Now we do run beyond that, we do start to see more of a northeasterly evolution by the end of this week. Yes, the isobars are not particularly tight packed, so it's not going to be a strong northeasterly wind, but it's going to be bringing the air generally in from that direction. And you can see by 10 days, we're starting to go into a proper northerly flow. Pretty chilly indeed. 
Now, one thing we're seeing a little bit different today on the models is perhaps this northerly spell of quite cold air, very cold air for this time of year, not lasting quite as long, because you can see low pressure outdoors in all these Canada, southern Greenland, trying to push that block that's over Greenland away. We do see that on this GFS run, and the high pressure just sits over the top of the UK. So we'd cut off that cooler northeasterly flow, but we'd still likely to see overnight temperatures um, get down towards freezing with a big diurnal range, but in the day, because we have less of a northeasterly flow, could be a little bit warmer. And right towards the end of the run, we generally have quite a westerly flow, but under higher pressure still. So do run it back and have a look at those upper air temperatures just briefly. You can see Chile at the, at the moment, and we start to see all that cold air starting to spill out the Arctic into Scandinavia, and then the UK is going to get its own bit of it in around 10 days' time on this latest GFS run, and we're seeing this consistently on the models. Minus 5 line spreading through, not quite getting that real cold air wily. Definitely for the north and the east getting that real cold air in, and we could be seeing quite uh, severe overnight frost with that before the high pressure does topple, and we do start to see more of a westerly flow, but it is looking still chilly in that sort of scenario. Yes, it's not quite as much a direct northerly wind, but it is still very chilly. And again, if we do run it back, have a look at the potential equivalent temperatures. Again, showing the air masses again, you can see real cold Arctic air spilling out. And again, 800 feet HPA temperature deviations are good four to six degrees below average, especially in these really chilly indeed. So do now have a look at the GM run, see how that does compare out to day 10. Again, easterly winds at the moment, high pressure retrogressing out towards the North Atlantic, up towards Greenland, and we do see a northeasterly flow in general. High pressure does real, really start to get up towards Greenland, and we do start to go into a northerly flow by around day 8. Now, similar to the GFS, it does get a proper northerly in, but it's just shifted to slightly further eastwards again with this pesky low towards northeast Canada pushing that block away. And that does mean we still see the cold air mass, but it doesn't quite last as long and isn't quite as unsettled. And right towards day 10, we do see more of a westerly flow coming in, potentially turning things a little bit more unsettled. So we do run it back, just have a look at those upper air temperatures for that colder air. You can see by Wednesday, still relatively decent upper air temperatures, not particularly cold by any means, but not particularly mild either. As we head towards day 5, we do see generally milder potentially in the south, so that's why we could still see the odd good day here or there, but depending on how strong the wind is. And as we head towards day 8, real cold blast comes out of, uh, out of north, uh, out of Canada, and the eastern side of the UK gets real cold air for a good day or so. Overnight frost quite plenty with that. And again, if we have a look at the United Kingdom, look. Look at that minus 10 line, just to our east, getting the minus 7, minus 8 into the far east of the UK. So, this one shifted things slightly further eastwards. If it shifted slightly further westwards, we'd be more widely, bitterly cold. Again, look at those 2 metre temperatures. That's in the middle of the day, only 6, 7 degrees. And by the night, it will be dropping down to freezing. And again, dew points as well with that real cold. That's minus 7, 8 degrees over the highlands in the far east. Real cold air mass. And again, if we have a look at the European outlook and have a look at the temperature deviation, look at that. Minus 10 to 12 degrees below average into parts of northwest Europe. Real cold. We could be seeing snow with that into parts of Europe and even into parts of Scotland and eastern England as well with that sort of air mass. Again, it would all depend on shower activity, but at this stage, um, yeah, just real cold air mass coming in. As I said, with the GFS, slightly shifted further eastwards and not lasting quite as long, but still seeing this northerly plunge. So do now have a look at the ECMWF before we have a look at the ensembles. We'll run through this quite quickly as the video is getting a little bit long. You can see easterly winds at the moment. Um, and then we do start to build a, high, a retrogression up towards Greenland. Northeasterly flow starting to come in by day 7. And we do start to see a proper northerly wind. More of a northerly wind than the other two runs. So by day 10 it does start to get cut off. But a bit more of a bitterly cold northerly wind. More of a direct northerly from the ECMWF. It does get that minus 5 line through all the way to central southern. In England really quite cold indeed and look at those 850 HPA temperatures down to minus 8 to 10 degrees below average really quite cold so ECWF run is remaining the coldest run today all the other ones still have this northerly wind in around 8 to 10 days time and staying chilly upper air temperature wise until then but they have it shifted slightly further eastward, so the eastern side of the UK is more favoured for this. And again, it can make massive differences this time of year. If you are under that upper air temperatures, those cold upper air temperatures could see severe frosts, where further westwards, it can only drop to 3 or 4 degrees. And that 
it's only a few degree difference um, can make a massive change to planting and gardening as well uh, and crops so hopefully for uh, everyone's sake out there who's got stuff out in the garden we do see that cold red sort of subside a bit but at this stage it's remaining um, for pretty much most of the east and potentially for all if we go by the ECMWF run so if you finish by having a look at the ensembles again you can see pretty much below average consistently over the next couple of weeks all the way to the 10th of may around average over the next few days and that's why those surface temperatures although we're still going to be seeing some sunshine are going to be a two or three degrees down on what's been recently some precipitation but still quite dry through the end of the week and then precipitation signal increases for the start of may that's because we see low pressure running in from the north and you can see generally colder upper air conditions get into a time where it's a good four or five degrees below average Again, a lot of scatter because it all depends on how sharp we get that northerly wind, but it still is generally below average. If we do have a look at the ECM WF uh, midnight run for the ensembles, very similar, well below average over the next couple of weeks, chilly over the next couple of days, returning slightly to around average for uh, the end of this week. Uh, or it's coming week, a working week, towards the weekend. And then for the first few days of May, it's well below average. A good maybe four or five degrees below average. You can see the operation run is one of the coldest runs there, but it's still got quite a lot of support, even from the control run. Yes, there are some milder runs, but the majority are or, or below average whether they're really below average like the ECWF run or whether they're just slightly below average regardless it's going to give a chilly feel as the air is originating from the arctic so yes it still looks cold over the next uh, couple of weeks perhaps a little glimmer of hope that the coldest air may stay away if we do see that northerly wind come further eastwards like the GM and the GFS was showing glimmer of hope perhaps for yeah for not seeing the most severe frost and maybe uh, the temperatures being a, a couple of degrees higher than maybe if we did see that air mass but it is still looking chillier uh, chilly and much colder than average and again if we have a look at those two meter temperatures you can see over the next few days only 13 14 degrees in the longer term yes there are some warmer outliers but majority are around that 10 to 12 degree mark and that's below average for this time of year but remember, with a northerly or northeasterly flow, we will be seeing quite a significant wind chill. And with a significant wind chill, it makes those temperatures feel more like 6, 7, 8 degrees, plunging us back in sort of wintry or early spring uh, spring sort of feel. So yeah, make sure you do keep up to date with the forecast. If you do have any plants out there, do make sure you continue watching the videos because in the UK Metal Office run, when we look at that at the start of the video, we'll be looking at whenever we have got frost coming up. There is a few potential frosts over the end uh, or over the coming week. So we'll have a look at those over the next few videos. But over the next night or two, it's unlikely, uh, except for maybe some prone areas across the Scottish Highlands, of course. So we'll have to keep an eye on that um, over the next couple of weeks, as it does look like there will be plenty more opportunities for colder than average conditions and with that frosts and generally chilly conditions but one good thing is it's pretty dry some gardeners out there might not like that especially uh, it has been pretty dry over the last couple months in general but if you are out, out there one saving grace uh, even though it's going to be feeling a little bit chillier than average is at least it is pretty dry we're not seeing loads of heavy showers maybe apart from tomorrow of course so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon Still.